Hey guys! Today I'm going to be doing the Reader's Problems book tag. This tag was created by Tiffany from About to Read, and as far as I know, I was not tagged to do this tag, but I'm going to do it anyways. Question one You have 20,000 books on your TBR. How in the world do you decide what to read next? Normally, I set myself a TBR at the beginning of each month, and really how I pick those books is really whatever I'm in the mood for at that point in time and if I know the month is going to be like super busy and I'm not going to have a lot of time to read. But just because I set myself a TBR doesn't mean I always stick to that TBR. Sometimes I won't get to all the books I set my TBR and sometimes I will add several other books to it. It really just depends on what I feel like reading, though I do try to stick to my TBRs. Question two. You're halfway through a book and you're just not loving it. Do you quit or are you committed? And I've talked about this quite a few times. I've never not finished a book and I will never not finish a book unless something physically happens to me where I cannot finish that book. So I would say I'm very committed to get the books done. And if I'm say in the first book of a three book series, like The Fifth Wave, and I own all three books, I will read the entire trilogy. Now, if I don't own the rest of the series, I will stop after I've read the books that I do own. Because if I'm not enjoying it, then I really don't care about the outcome. I just want to finish the books and see if they get any better. Thankfully, this has only happened to me twice, maybe three times, and I really hope it doesn't happen much more. Question three. The end of the year is coming and you're so close, but so far away on your Goodreads reading challenge. Do you try to catch up and how? This is actually my third year doing the Goodreads Reading Challenge, and I really haven't had a problem finishing them so far. But this year, a lot more is going on, and I set myself 70 books to read, and I'm already two books behind, which that's not too bad as long as I don't let it get any further than that. But if I was, say, like 20 books behind in like December, I would read as many books as I can and try to catch up but I'm not gonna like kill myself to do it because if I force myself to read just for the sake of finishing the challenge, then I won't get to enjoy the books to the fullest and I'll feel really, really bad about that because authors put a lot of work into these books. So I don't wanna speed read through 20 books in a month. Question four, the covers of a series you love do not match. How do you cope? Well, I've actually come into booktube really late, so the majority of covers match. If they don't match in hardcover, they match in softcover, and I will normally get whatever format has the matching covers. So at this point in time, I don't believe I have any series that the covers do not match. I may be wrong about that, but I don't think I am. But if a new series came out, and I read the first book and loved it, and the rest of the series comes out in a new cover. I will probably rebuy the first book in the series when it comes out in that new cover because I just couldn't ignore the cover change. It would just irritate me so much. So I haven't had this problem yet, but I would definitely rebuy the books so that all the covers match. Question five. Everyone and their mother loves a book that you really don't like. Who do you bond with over shared feelings? This came up when I was reading the Fifth Wave series. No one in my family or friends actually reads the books I read. So I got on Goodreads and I looked at the one and two star reviews for the book series and I just got my kicks and giggles reading the reviews and what people thought about the books. Because I try to be polite in my reviews no matter how much I don't like the books, but <laughs> a lot of people aren't like that. I feel bad because the authors are getting these crappy reviews, but I also get a kick out of it because it's like, okay, they really shared my thoughts on these books. And unlike me, they are more than willing to share them with everyone. Question six. You're reading a book and you're about to start crying in public. How do you deal? Surprisingly, I've never had this problem. And that's weird considering the majority of my reading is done in public. But I think if this ever did happen to me, the people that saw me crying would probably just ignore me anyways. And it's not like I'm gonna see these people again, so I really don't care what they think. And considering the majority of my reading is also done in hospitals, you know, they may just think it's normal for me to be crying, so I'm just gonna cry. Question seven. A sequel to a book you love just came out, but you've forgotten a lot from the prior novel. We reread the book, skip the sequel, 
try to find a synopsis on Goodreads, or cry in frustration. It really depends because for Rick Riordan's new book that's about to come out, The Dark Prophecy, I actually plan on rereading The Hidden Oracle. But for some series that I love, like um, Cassandra Clare's new series, The Dark Artifices, I actually remember pretty much everything that happened in Lady Midnight, even though it's been so long since I've read it. So I actually don't plan on rereading the book. I just plan on watching my discussion video for it, and I'll remember a lot from that. But more often than not, if I love the first book, I will 9 times out of 10 skip the sequel and just wait until the majority of the series is out, and then I'll just read the entire series. I normally don't like to read book series until I have the entire series anyways, because I just like binge reading the whole series and I hate waiting for the next book to come out. Especially since remembering the little details is a major problem and you have to wait one to two years for a book to come out. Not fun. Question eight. You do not want anyone, anyone, barring your books. How do you politely tell people nope when they ask? Thankfully I have not had this problem in years because my family members are the only ones that actually see my books and like I have said previously. They don't read the books I read. And if someone was to ask me if they could borrow a book, I would just tell them I've had some bad experiences with people borrowing my books and if you really want to read this book I highly recommend it, but I would also say go to the library and get the book yourself. Because this is not a library no matter how much it looks like one. Actually I think I have more books than my library, but we won't get into that. Question 9. You've picked up and put down 5 books in the last month. How do you get over your reading slump? Okay, first off, I would never pick up and sit down five books. I would force myself to read them regardless of a slump or not. If I'm like in a slump and it hits like part way through a book, I will finish reading that book and I will either start reading fan fiction of like a movie or TV series that I like, like Teen Wolf or Suicide Squad, something like that, or I'll reread a book. I normally choose to reread Harry Potter because it's just a book that I know will kick me right out of a reading slump. But realistically, I would not pick up and sit down five books if I'm in a slump. I would finish the book that's put me in the slump and then I would do other things. Question 10. There are so many new books coming out that you're dying to read. How many do you actually buy? Now if I was doing this tag at the beginning of my booktube channel, I would say I would have bought all of them. I wouldn't have cared about the money because I had a good paying job. Okay, well no, I had a crappy paying job, but I saved up my money. I didn't really spend money on anything except books and food, so I would have had the money to buy all the books I want. But now, since I've discovered the book outlet, 9 times out of 10, I'll just wait until the new books go on sale there and then buy them, unless I am like super dying to read it like The Dark Prophecy or The Lord of Shadows. Those books I'm picking up right away. I do not care. So really it depends on the book. If I'm like dying dying like it's a series that I love so much that I just cannot stand to let it sit in the bookstores any longer, then I'll buy it right away. Even if it's like 10 books. But if it's a book that I know I'm not gonna read right away, I'll just wait until it comes out on the book outlet. Question 11. After you've bought the new books you can't wait to get to, how long do they sit on your shelf before you get to them? This really varies because I know Lord of Shadows and The Dark Prophecy are not even going to make it to my shelf before I read them, but for other books, um, normally it just depends on my mood because those books can be sitting on my shelves for a week or a month or even a few years before I actually get to them. I hate that that happens, but sometimes it just can't be helped because I may buy a contemporary one month, but I may not feel like reading a contemporary until like six or seven months later. So it really just depends on the mood I'm in and how excited I am for that book. Well, those are all the questions for the Reader's Problems tag. And I have a question for you guys. How many books are actually in your TBR pile? Because I know mine, it's anywhere between 800 to 1,000 books, I think. I think the last time I counted it was around 700 and some, and I've actually bought a lot since then, so I'm just guessing the 800 to 1,000 range. I can't be the only one with that many books on my TBR, right? But anyways, that is the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!